slipped in the water. As you can see for the windsock, it's a bit windy at the moment, but it's supposed to calm down later. So I'm going to do my ground testing first for both the Icarus, UK Icarus X and the Rafa 40 long distance uh, flights that I've got to do this year. So I thought I'd uh, take this opportunity to share everyone what I've done. I can't take all the credit. Um, Andy Bex, and uh, I'll put a video link up here somewhere to his video about his para camping. And also Simon Walker, who's a Icarus X veteran, who's given me some advice on how to fit uh, fuel auxiliary tanks to the uh, Maverick Monster. Without further ado, I will uh, run through what I've got. The kit prep starts in the in the pockets of the main harness, and in here, I've got five 100 milliliter bottles of oil already measured out. So as and when I get the fuel. I will be able to just pop them in and I know how much I've got. On the side of the frame, which I will put up later and I'll probably do a time lapse of that, is the poles for the tent. In the side bag, I have the inflatable bed, the tent oversheet, fly sheet, sorry, and the actual main tent itself. So that is everything and also a lightweight wing bag i've got my normal one here but this is where i'm going to carry with me put it in there so it doesn't blow away on the front as i made this bag for convenience is my flight deck bag that will also hold a few other bits and pieces that i'll run through now when i can get my hands off the camera The other piece that I'm going to be testing later on in the flight without all the other items on, just so I can test one thing at a time in flight, is the, uh, is the bladder bag. At the moment I've only got four litres in here, but it will carry six. Tigon tube, fuel tubing, so it's fuel safe, and a fuel on-off stop. The reason for this is a metal one, is I did try a plastic one, I did some pressure testing, and the moment I turned it on, it just leaked. So I've gone for a metal, um, metal stop valve there. Then go through to a dry brake connector so the whole system can be de-rigged and this is now an open line straight to the back of the tank. Behind the tank I've got a second fuel cap which I've drilled out and that runs through to a pipe inside that is literally just an open line. The, uh, the bag, I've done some testing in the workshop, actually you, you do need to physically squeeze the fuel through, it, it's not designed to pull through. And the reason for that is, you might be able to see just at the back there, is a clear pipe with a, uh, a tank fitting. I'll go on the other side and show you what that is. That tank fitting is a secondary vent that comes through to here with an on-off valve. The reason for this, I've been strongly advised to fit it, is that if you have this bag tank on your chest and you open line it, the pressure squeeze from this tank actually starts to flood the carb and the carb will cut. So you need this main open vent to stop the uh, tank becoming overpressurized. It's not; it won't actually pull through. It will overpressurize it and cut your engine. On the other pocket, it is squeezed in there. Is my um, paramotor cover, and that will be there to cover the machine overnight for the for the Icarus. Through to my main bag. It was a concept design, whether it works or not. This is why I'm testing everything to make sure it works before I need it. It looks very sparse at the moment. Anyone can, anyone can be uncomfortable, so that's my blow-up pillow. That's my sleeping bag. And this is my um, cooking system. Very, very simple, very, very basic. It's a metal mug. That is the gas burner and striker, so no match, no lighter required and a mini gas canister that's designed to fit inside, well, luckily not designed, luckily fitted inside. Racing spork, additionally, as you've seen, there's loads of space in there. I'll be carrying some water and some either wet or dry rations that I can, um, that I can place in the tin, uh, either make myself a brew and a hot meal with the water. So that, as you can see, with a few extras, is my Icarus X Prep.
When I'm all set up on the field and I'll go inside the tent in a moment, the wing bag will be squished down a little bit more and I'm gonna place that in the seat for when I'm camping and then put the paramotor cover over the top. So the wing will be protected and also the paramotor will be protected from any inclement weather that we may receive overnight. The tent is the first time I've actually ever put this tent up. It's fresh out of the bag as it were. Uh, went together really easy, really quickly. I haven't blown the air mat up because it takes a while to go compress back down again but uh, that's plenty of space inside there and one of the benefits of being a, a short person is that I don't need a lot of space anyway but plenty of ventilation so there won't be too much condensation overnight the kit that I've used I'll put in the description some of it's quite pricey but I did a lot of research into this mattress it actually inflates to give you two inches to keep you nicely off the ground this is just a summer weight sleeping bag and I'll probably end up fly, uh, sleeping in my kit overnight if I need to. This tent, I'm not in, expecting it to last too long, but for the number of times I may do camping over the years, or para camping over, over the year, for 20 quid, this, um, this tent is, uh, is gonna be a gem. It's very lightweight, compacts down really small, and comes into nice little module areas. I can shove it wherever I need to. So hopefully that's given you a bit of a, a perspective of some of my kit that I'm gonna use for the Icarus X. I think with this wind, I am not going very far today, but that's not the point. So the whole point of this flight now is to make sure I can comfortably transfer fuel. I've got four litres in the main tank, three litres in the bladder tank. And I want to be able to make sure that I can land with more than I've taken off with in the main tank. Let's just hope it's smoothing up the smooth enough up there for me to do it. wind is strong but uh, at the moment smooth saying that it's this northerly again which always gives us rubbish off the ridge line I'm going to stay within the uh, proximity of the airfield today purely that if I have a problem I can land back without an issue I've got some height but I'd rather have a little bit more Height is your friend, after all. Seatboard out. And there's Miss Stirrup. Oh, I've lost Miss Stirrup. No, I haven't. I can see why people, if they're demonstrating something, use a foot cam, because I was going to use a GoPro for this, to show you, but uh, I'm not that confident about doing it. We have the bladder in front of me. I want to check how much fuel's in there now. Getting the mirror out. No batteries required. Fuel mirror. Approximately three and a half litres fuel tap going on. And is there any fuel coming out of it? Yes, I have fuel transfer. I know when I did my tests in the workshop, but it didn't actually transfer that quickly. It's almost going to be one of those things of when you're flying along, the moment you've got the capacity, transfer it. I reckon for six litres would take about 15 minutes to transfer. No issues with the engine at the moment. Cool, bubbles flowing. I saw the air in the tank as well. One of the things I've considered for the Icarus is having a very, very stable wing, easy launching. I love the Hadron for cross country. It is a bit of a pig to launch though. I kin the Hadron XX to being a bit like a Spitfire. It's a bleep on the ground, but wonderful in the air. But I want a little bit more hands off. So I've, uh, I've gone for a Sirocco 2. So I've had one before, loved it. Easy launching, lightweight, very stable. 
but also got the cross-country speed not as fast as this but I don't think the Icarus X is actually all about speed per se still transferring nicely the line is solid lovely day I know I say that a lot of my videos but you can't be flying with the sun out and not say it's a lovely day still looks like it's transferring which is good again this is a just an initial test, just to see if the system works and I'm content that I can do it in flight otherwise there's no point progressing any further with the test. I'm a bit meticulous about anything I do. Change one thing at a time, make sure it works. Otherwise if you're changing five or six things, you never know what's quite what where the problem was. Lifting the bag, lifting the bag up now. Just gonna do a quick mirror check to see how much is actually in there. Can't quite see with the sunlight on it. Well, that's six litres in there, so I've transferred at least two and a half litres out of three litres. I think as that bag is pretty much dry now. Ooh, the mud has made the boots stick to the stirrup. We're trying to stick clear of that water. No fancy getting me all my wing wet today. Let's have a little quick play. Just to get down. Whee! by my van from here. I think we'll try. Engine off, out of the seat. Forward. And touchdown in the slop. Oh great. Let's bring the wing down so I don't slide all over the place. Cool, I landed by the van. I'm happy with that. So a bit of post-flight debrief. Uh, this is the bladder that had three litres in it. I know that because I took it out of the tank this morning and it had seven litres in it. So, which proves my burns right on the, the pre-warm-up and takeoff. It was a 15 minute flight from start to finish and I've used one litre. This bladder is now empty. There's pretty dregs in there, but nothing more. The only thing I have realised, and I should have realised this before, you can see here, the, um, I've got metal to metal, I'm not a fan of that, so I'll put some heat shrink on this bottom piece just so there's no more metal to metal on that. But there's nothing leaking, the hydraulic clamps are all on, fine, the shutoff valve worked fine, and um, uh, no fuel leaked out during flight. So I think I'm going to go back up and have a bit of a play while I'm here, take it all off and fly normally. It's actually a mnemonic I run through my head before I do any any form of acro. And it's called, it goes back to my PPL days. Or Hazel is height, airframe, security, elevation. Elevation to commit maneuver by a particular height, location, and then you do two clearing turns just to make sure no one's you're not gonna fly into anyone. You've also got time to assess what's coming towards you. Two thousand two hundred feet. There's nothing about that I can see. It's a quick play. Brilliant, I love that. Nice big wing overs. 
Oh yeah! Not that fight for a battle though. Complete of that speed. Complete of that speed. Happy buddy now. Let's see if we can land properly again. Land for the van. Land for the van. It's quite strong wind at the minute. A little bit gusty. Just hoping it doesn't slip over like I did earlier on my takeoff. Engines off. Committed now. I don't want to land for that water. Oh, crap. slips in the water. <sighs> you know what? I'll leave that in because someone's going to laugh at it. Slipped in the water. What a tit. I'd just like to say a big thank you to Andy Bex and Paranoob. It's because of their Icarus X prep videos I've actually thought about doing it this year. So I've signed up for the Icarus X, which should be great fun. Uh, I hope my little video has also been of help to everyone. And uh, also my comedy landing at the end provided some amusement for you. So until the next time, fly safe.